Hi, I'm Dave Ingebretson, and once again, Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying the Angler's Art. And uh, tonight, again, we've got some innovative things to show. Different. Uh, we're going to show you the first is going to be called a furled dry fly, and it's the easiest extended body parachute fly you'll ever tie. Very simple to tie and extremely effective. Furled body dry fly. Then we're going to tie an eastern pattern, and one of Joe Humphreys called the Humps Crest Bug. Crest bug. And then we'll tie a western steelhead pattern, a new one called the EZ. That's the letters EZ. Spay. Spay. Mm -hmm. So, Leroy, tell us right, about for a the furl fly. dry fly. Not much material in it. I'll use a standard 8 aught tan uh, dry fly thread. The body on this one will be the tan polypropylene. You could use whatever color you want. But the polypropylene is <coughs> important because it floats the fly. Yes, and then the hackle will be brown. Now, I have a size 12 hook in the vise. I have already pinched the barb on it. I'm going to start this thread almost in the middle. I'm going to go back slightly. I started a little bit ahead of middle, and I'll just go back to the middle of the fly. Mm -hmm. That's where the whole fly will be tied, basically. Yep. We want to keep it towards the front. Yes. Now I'll tie this piece of poly in. The poly I have is probably only about three inches long. Now the word furled, F-U-R-L-E-D, means twisted. Mm -hmm. And Leroy is going to show us uh, why this is called furled. Now what I have is a pair of hackle pliers on it and a little shepherd's crook, and I'm just going to start twisting. And what you want to do is you want to twist until that thing starts to, to do the secondary mm -hmm. twist. Starts but don't let over. it. But you want to see it start trying mm -hmm. to twist a second time. Now I'll get rid of that shepherd's crook. And this is kind of hard to show the camera on here of how long this is going to be. But I'm just going to grab it where it's going to give me about an inch or so behind that body where the body tie-in is. Yeah, well, not even I'm going to let go. Yeah. I'm going to let go. Well, you can see it's already yeah, twisted. Yeah. Normally, you, I'll bind it down. he did that to show you, but normally you'd bind it down first. Yes. Good yes. and tight, and then take your fingers away and, and then I see hope it, it will stay bound on there. Now, of course, the length, you can tie these down to 18s, sure. 20s, any length you want. Now, I'm going to take a couple of wraps behind that just to make sure that it stands up in the air right, because basically this is going to be a parachute fly. Right, and you want, the, you want this body to stand out almost mm -hmm. at right angles to the hook. I would stand it up even a little straighter, maybe. Oh, would you? Yeah. All right, almost I can do that. Almost at right angles to the hook. I can do that. Because the unusual thing, well, you'll see the unusual. That's good. That's good. All right, then I'm going to tie a brown hackle in. Dry fly hackle. Now, the interesting thing is this is going to be a parachute, but it's easy to tie because you're just wrapping it around the hook. Yes. And you'll see in a minute when all this comes together why it's a parachute. Okay, that ought to be enough and of that. And that, that uh, tag end of poly sticking out have that wing sticking is going out to be there. the wing. Yes, get rid so, of that. So, no, did you cut the wing off? No, I cut the parachute oh. or the hackle uh, off. Hackle, I couldn't see what you now, did. Now, you can make this wing. Well, I would, what length do you at, like? At this point, I'd whip finish and be done with it. Oh, okay. Or you might want to cut the wing a little shorter to make it easier to whip around. Oh, I can go around it, I think. Take four or five wraps around it. Now, the fly is finished. It's that quick. Now the only that thing i got to do is trim that the wing The Pro is sticking forward. That's the mm -hmm. wing. So cut it the length you want the wing. Now, take it out of the vise and show people that this is going to sit in. Yeah, that's It'll good. Float that's good. Just like it's that. It's going to float like that in the surface film mm -hmm. with the hook hanging vertical right. on the parachute with this nice little. And this little body, body will float it very well. And, uh, you know, you can put some dry fly paste on sure. that whole thing. And uh, it just it <laughs> looks so real coming down the stream. I'll bet it would. And, uh, and you can see that wing. Oh yeah, very nice. And if you want to, you can put a different color wing on mm -hmm. by putting the body on, clipping it off, and then tying Tie in the new winging wing. material. Well, there's a furl dry fly. Nothing more than tan poly for the extended body and the wing, and brown hackle, and tan fly tying thread. All right, now we're going to tie an eastern pattern that will also work in the lakes. Oh, I know I out, out here in the west. It's called humps. Uh, crest, crest bug. bug, Joe Humphrey's pattern, Humps Crest Bug, mm -hmm. and uh, in in uh, the West we'd use it in the lakes. We'd wait it.
to get down deep, and it mm -hmm. would, I think, be a good shrimp pattern. I think it would. But in the east, in the spring creeks, they don't wait it. In, uh, Fish it's it an shallow, easy fly to tie. Let's see what you're going to do. All right, we'll use a black 6 aught fly tying thread. What I've done is taken some of this red and gray squirrel and blended them together just to make the, the dubbing. The hackle will be grizzly. Uh, you wouldn't think of hackle on a, on a wet fly, but we'll trim it. It will be ribbed with the copper wire. Now I'll tie this on a scud hook. I have it in the vise already. The barb has been pinched. And I'm going to take this tying thread to the rear. And of course, when you clip this squirrel, you want the guard hairs in it. Yes. Uh, yes. You want it to be shaggy. Now I'm going to take a piece of the copper wire ribbing and tie it in at the rear. Now this, I know this is different than the way you do it, but maybe it'll be a little different for mm, people who haven't seen this before. No, that's the way I... You tie well, the copper wire in at the rear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I haven't tied the hackle in. That's yeah. what you do. Different. I do. I different. I tie the hackle in at the okay. rear also. All right. Now you can see this dubbing is very, very spiky. And that's what we're looking for. Yeah. And it, it being short, it's a little hard to dub it. So you're going to use bit. a dubbing loop. I'm going to use a dubbing loop just to tighten it up. Yeah. I always like a dubbing loop when I've got the short mm -hmm. uh, guard hairs I want to stick out mm -hmm. and uh, keep the dubbing tight that way. And I'll grab, latch it in the center, take a couple of wraps, and then go around it all. And then I'm going to get my tying thread back up to the front and twist this. I and think that's an interesting thing, too. A lot of people will put the uh, dubbing loop in below the dubbing on the bare thread and put the bare thread up and then oh. twist it into the loop. Mm -hmm. You're actually twisting uh, I'm twi yeah. both layers of dubbing, and that's, All I together. think, a help Yeah. because it makes it even spikier. And then I'll wrap this forward. And I'm not trying to overlap it. Some, some of the guard hairs I want to definitely keep picked out and away from binding itself down. But you can starting, see how those guard hairs oh, are just sticking starting to all real get over. buggy already, yeah. isn't it? And about one more, that ought to do it right there. In fact, you know, that's good dubbing for any nymph. Yes, it would be. Sure would be. I'll clip that excess off. Well, I just let my thread go and it unwound. I'll cheat oh, the my system. My idol has feet of clay. Uh, cheat the system. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll work. All right. Then here comes the, the hackle. We'll tie it on at the front and then run it to the rear. Now this is what we do differently. This is I what tie it we in at the different. back and go forward. Yes. And you're going to bind it down with through. the ribbing. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to grab this hackle with this copper rib. And I'll take three or four good hard wraps around it back here which will capture that hackle pretty well. And then just come forward with the rib. And now the rib is also binding the hackle down. Sure is. That's why I like to do it that way. Uh -huh. now, I could reverse wrap that ribbing and do the same thing. Get the same effect, mm -hmm. yeah, which is what I have to do. OK. And I'll break that wire off, maybe. Well, Take your broke time. off crooked. Your time. So I'll come in with the heel of my scissors and cut it off. Now I'll get rid of the hackle in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and put a whip finish on this fly. Now realize that a crest bug is sort of like uh, a shrimp. Uh -huh. Crustacean but, but, uh, of some kind. I was talking to Joe Humphrey about it and I said, well, couldn't you just use a, a, a scud pattern? He said, oh, no, no, they're different. You got to Oh, different. And uh, so now it, I'm going to trim this top and sides. Basically, with this crest bug, you want the fuzzy body with uh -huh. the legs sticking down sticking the bottom, like the a bottom. little crustacean. And that's exactly what we've got yeah. here. But that makes a good-looking dub oh, yeah. fly. It really does. Now, as I say, legs if I was using out. that out west in the lakes, when mm -hmm. I want to get deep, I just wait the hook. Wait it, put a bead head on it. You could do any of those. Yeah. But there's a little crest bug. I'll put a drop of head cement on it. All right. Tell us what you used. We used the red and gray squirrel. Used grizzly hackle, ribbed it with copper on a scud hook, size Looks 12. Good. Looks good. All right, the next fly we're going to do is a salmon fly or steelhead fly. I guess we need a steelhead fly. Mm -hmm. It's called the EZ, e -Z, 
uh, the letters Spayfly. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to use? Well, I'm going to use a size 1 hook. You could vary the hook size, whatever you want. I'm using a fluorescent orange 6 aught tying thread. We're using a sinking gold rib. It has a, uh, a lead substitute in the center. This is where the fly gets its name. This actually looks like yarn, but it is dubbing. It will pick out. There will be yellow hackle in it. And then something new, but maybe some of you haven't seen. This is what they call finished raccoon. It's 3X long material, very, very fine. And then another widgeon feather. I have this number one hook in the vise. I'm going to go ahead and start the tying thread like we always do and run to the rear. This fly I totally dreamed up on my own. They, there, really? Nobody helped well, me. It wasn't a nightmare. It wasn't a nightmare. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I thought, man, there's just not, you ever see a fly you just know is going to work. Well, I'm impressed with that finish. Uh, oh, it's just unreal. I yeah. hope that it will pick up the way it uh, it halos the whole fly. Well, it's like a hairy marabou. Uh, kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's much more durable yes. than a marabou, but mm -hmm. it's still that soft, floaty action. Now, I've taken mm -hmm. about three and a half wraps of this material. I'm going to try to get away with leaving that tied in. I may make it. I may not. Don't know. Then we'll take some of this dubbing. That's, that's the this easy dub. This is the dub. easy dub. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lay it along the hook shank, tie it down, stand this up out of the way, and come to the front. I want to make sure that's all bound down good, so I'm going to make one more pass over it. Now I'll take a wrap of the easy dub behind, and then just come forward with it, keeping it fairly close together. And just wind and wind. Nothing very difficult about that fly so far, huh? No, without the, if people don't have the easy dub, they could actually dub the body. Dub a regular body, sure. Or could. use orange yarn. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to come forward. I'll rib that fly. And I only want about four to five wraps on it. Don't want any more than that. Tie it off. Get it out of the way. Tie that, I'm going to tie that down really well because now I have a tool here that I'm going to go through and pick it out. This is a very expensive tool. Tell them about that. That's great. This is great. A, a popsicle stick with Velcro on it, the hook. but you can just scrub that dubbing out yeah. and make it just stand out from itself. It's uh, the hook, hook part of the hook and loop hook, fastener. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's great. But you great. can see how it's starting to really pop out. You can just scrub that for as long as you want, pick it out as much as you want. Yeah, I'm going to make that one of those. Oh, it's nice. Now what I'm going to do is take one of these yellow feathers, yellow hackle, trim the tip like we've done so many times, and tie it in. And you know, while you were getting your materials ready, I found out that that, that popsicle stick thing is great for scratching the back of your neck. Oh, your I see. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I left my, my hackle pliers down there. I'm going to have to try to wrap this without. And I'm going to fold this back as I go. It's a lot quicker if I would have remembered now, to grab my hackle pliers. You left that on the pliers. skin, man. A little strip of skin. A little strip. No, no. This is the yellow hackle. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't got I to that see, yet. Yeah. No, no. Now I'll get that hackle out of the way, clip that section off we don't need. I want to fold that just a little bit back and wrap over it a little bit, which will make it again form to the rear. And now I'll take a piece of this finished dubbing, or finished raccoon, and it has the long guard hairs in it, it has the under fur. It is just really good looking stuff. I'll clip a little bit of that off. Now, now I don't you, you, want. Did you leave some on the skin then? A no, no, skin on no. There I've, pu I've pulled it all off. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of a lot of that under fur. I don't need all of that under fur in there. It'll just get in the way and mat the fly. Now you could save that, cut it up for dubbing if you wanted. It would really do well for dubbing. Then I'm going to um, then I'm going to make a dubbing loop. Go around ah, that. Yeah. 
throw that around. And then I'm just going to fit this right in that dubbing loop. And this is where you would adjust the length of whatever length it is you want to stream out behind the mm -hmm. hook. Mm -hmm. Spread that out as best I can. Now I'm going to go through and trim that off. I don't need all of that in there. Well, Dave, I even left my little tool that I used to do that. So I'm going to twist it with my fingers. You know, a real professional would have the proper tools. Oh, out. thank you. You know, you just pick them up and go. But here, hold that. <laughs> I'll turn around. I'll never oh, you mean it? Yeah. Here, oh, hold yeah. it. All right. All right. You got it? I, I want them to show people that I'm comfortable with the vice, too. Okay. Well, you're doing well. All right. How'd that do? A little, oh, you did so well. Thank you. I have my little hook tool now. I don't know why I put that away from the last one. And then I'm going to twist. Now that hair is so long that it will actually have a tendency to want to mat around the, the thread itself as I'm going with it. So you kind of have to keep picking it out. I also will use this dubbing loop or dubbing brush and pick it out, which again will get those long guard hairs out of which I really want that to be. Then as you wrap this, go around. Pull it all to the rear. Pull it all to the rear. And you can see how it just starts to encompass that yellow. And it just is a real halo there. I'll take my uh, bodkin and go through and pick that out a little bit when we're all through. I'll tie that down. Clip that off. And I'm going to build just a little head there. Then I got one more step, and I'll tie this widgeon feather in. That's good looking stuff, that. that uh, the widgeon? Finished raccoon. Oh, it really is. It's hard to imagine it's a bunch just, of orange yes. raccoons running all over Finland. Well, it. yeah. It's good stuff. And it has to be finished or it won't work. Oh, yeah. You know, you understand how that oh, yeah. is. Get that widgeon bound down and a wrap. And you only need about a wrap and a half to two wraps of this. Just to encompass that hair a little bit, give it a little bit more color in front. Bind that down. Trim off that excess. All right, now while you're making the head, let's review the materials you used to get on this thing. Okay, we'll use the gold sinking braid. We'll use orange easy dub. The thread is fluorescent orange. We use the yellow hackle. We use the orange finish raccoon and a natural widgeon. And that's the easy spade And that's the easy spade. Now we've got a surprise for you. We have a bonus fly in this show. We're going to tie a wet fly, a jack dart side mm -hmm. wet fly called mm -hmm. the sparrow. And it has no sparrow feathers in it. No sparrow is. feathers in <laughs> it. But. All right, I'll use a six-aught black tie or a gray tying thread. I have two different size pheasant rump feathers laying out. The small ones will be for the tail section. The larger one will be for the collar, the hackle. I've mixed some rabbit and some squirrel together to make the dubbing. And then the front will be tied with this filiplume feather, which comes off the inside shaft of the rump feathers. Now, I'll dress the shank, like always. When I tie this fly, I will normally tie it with just the pheasant tail fiber sticking out the back. But this particular pattern does call definitely for two hackle of the greenish rump feathers sticking out the back for the tail. So we'll do it according to Hoyle. We don't do very much according to that, Dave, but 
we'll get these stuck in. Hey, I said I was going to shut up and let you work because we don't have a lot of time. So I see. Okay. The thought of sitting here and keeping my mouth shut, I just... Repulsive I to I, you. Well, I've already sure. done, I've blown that already, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll run the dubbing. And I'm trying to hurry, so I'm, I'm not getting a real good even lay on here, but this is a phenomenal fly. I have used this fly a lot in lakes, Montana, a lot in Idaho and Washington. That would be a good stream fly. It would be. Yeah. I can't remember that I have ever used one in a, in a stream. I, I well may have. Well, you know, a lot of people, the old wet flies have gone out of fashion, but mm -hmm. they're still good flies. Yes, they are. And easy to fish, usually. Okay, I'll twist this up, run it forward, and I really can't believe it would make any difference if you had just a few of the pheasant tail fiber sticking out the back. It'd be much easier to tie it that way, mm -hmm. but that those two fire, uh, feathers in there will definitely give it a good action, mm -hmm. a very Got good a little, action. A little flash of color. Mm -hmm. Wind this up almost to the front. I've got to leave room for that Philip Plume head on there. Well, you got about two minutes Get to do that it. Get so. down. <laughs> now I'll take this longer uh, pheasant tail section. I get these above the the uh, uh, the uh, tail feathers around the tail feathers, the rump section. Some people will call it. Then I'll grab this with my hackle pliers, and like we've been doing, we fold it as we go around. Two, two and a half turns is probably all you need with this at all. And you can see how that soft hackle would really work well. There, that's all bound down. Get rid of that. And then if I don't break this fillet plume, Dave, we may have it made. Phillip plume is very, very soft material, extremely soft. It's a delicate touch. Some people will put them in a dubbing loop and, uh, and bind them in that way. I want to try it without. I can get it worked around here. Capture it with the hackle pliers and just very, very lightly wrap it in. And again, wrap them to the rear. Now this head will work all those little fibers in there work just like gills. Well, now, while you're finishing that up, uh, we're going to have to get out of here, so I'm going to say, wrap up the show by saying okay, that we've, and I'll tied, finish it. we've tied the furled dry fly, mm -hmm. we tried hump, tied hump's crest bug, we try, tied the easy spay steelhead fly, and now we're finishing up on this wet fly, the sparrow. And uh, why don't you tell us one more time what we use for materials on this sparrow? Use the, the pheasant rump section for rump feathers for the tail, dub the, the body with a squirrel and rabbit mixture, pheasant rump for the hackle, fillet plume for the head, gray tying thread. And that's it, we're out of here. Thanks All for right. watching, you will tune in again next week, and uh, in the meantime, tie some good flies. Good night. Dave and Leroy have produced two 100-minute videos covering basic trout fly selection and tying for the Western and Eastern United States. For basic Western and Eastern flies videos, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website at publictelevision.org. Cost of each video is $16.95 or get both for just $31.95 plus shipping and handling. You can also order the programs from this series. Each videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit us at our website, publictelevision.org.
For more information on this series, please visit our website, publictelevision.org.